This video tutorial will walk you through the steps of completing the timeline assignment in our New Mexico history class. Uh, you'll notice we're starting here at the front page in CNM Learn for our class. Um, hopefully it should look familiar to you. You can access the timeline assignment in a number of different ways. There are links in the syllabus. There are also links to your submissions in each of the learning modules. So please do remember it's always best to start with the learning modules because that's where you'll find the list of everything that you need to complete for the week or for the unit. Um, I'm going to show you what's in the timeline tab this time around. So rather than going through the learning module, I'm going to click timeline. And this is where you'll find a link to the class timeline, link to the timeline instructions. The video that I'm making currently will be right here. And then below, these are all of the uh, links that you'll use to submit your timeline. So if you don't go straight from the, uh, I got an email. If you don't go straight from the uh, learning module to submit your work on the timeline, you can come here to the timelines tab and you will find all of the submission links. Please do note, and I'm gonna open the unit two timeline submission. You need to submit your timeline, so you need to post to the timeline. That's what I'm going to show you shortly how to do that. But you also need to upload the uh, document that you completed your work in. So I'm going to show you to complete your work in a Word document first. You need to upload that here. Um, so for the ID step, you'll just click Browse My Computer and Submit. Um, if this ever happens to you, I'm glad that it did this. You see these buttons here. There should be um, a table of contents here. So I'm going to maximize the table of contents. Actually, could have that size. There we go. Um, when you get to the second part that's due every Friday for the connection step, you'll have to go to the table of contents tense, and click there. Click OK to move on. And this is where you will do the same thing to um, upload your submission for uh, the connection step. So hopefully that all makes sense. Let's go back to the timeline tab itself. Uh, this then, I'm going to click this link. This will take us to our course timeline. Um, this is what it looks like when you get there. I'm going to click the X or continue. They both do the same thing. And now you can see what is on the timeline. In order to understand what you're supposed to do here though, uh, we're gonna go back to the tab in Blackboard and we're gonna open the timeline assignment instructions. <laughs> So these instructions will walk you through, uh, hopefully clearly and in even more detail than I'm going to show you here, uh, walk you through the assignment. Once it loads, I'll scroll down a little bit. This link will also open the course timeline. So like I mentioned, there are a number of different ways to complete the same things uh, for most of the assignments in our class. And that's just so that there are many easy ways to access everything. Here is the login information for the class timeline. Everyone will use the same login information. We'll all be working on the same timeline together. So you don't need to create your own TikiTaki account or your own TikiTaki timeline for this assignment. So instead, you go back here to the timeline that we had already opened. You find the login button, click that, and then you enter the information. Um, I already have it here. Enter the information that was provided in the timeline assignment. And so then you type in the password that was given to you and click login and update the password. You can have your browser save the password for you so that it will just uh, log you in automatic automatically the next time. That's what I just did there. When you see this page, you wanna scroll down just a little bit and click on the words New Mexico history right here. And now you're back to the timeline, but this time you're logged in with this admin button. The admin button, I just clicked on it, will allow you to add your stories to the course timeline. So that's very important. I'm gonna go back to the timeline instructions tab for a moment. So these instructions will explain to you what you need to do for each unit. Um, by each Wednesday night at 11.59 p.m., you need to complete the ID step. So this step will require you to choose a topic uh, from the unit that we're currently working on. So for unit two, for example, 
we're studying the earliest peoples in New Mexico, so thousands of years ago, um, all the way up through the early Spanish um, conquest and the Pueblo Revolt. So you need to pick a person, place, or event that comes from that block of history. And that one's a lot larger than most of them will be. Um, so you can go from thousands of years ago with the earliest peoples um, all the way up to about 1680 or so with the Pueblo Revolt. So again, make sure that the, the topic you've chosen fits within the general chronological frame uh, that we're working on for the unit. You can choose anything you want. It's left open to you. Please do realize, however, that you cannot, let me go back up here, you cannot duplicate topics. Um, you can't just call your event something else or your person by a different name or an alias um, if someone else has already completed it. So the very first thing you want to do is choose your topic, go to the course timeline, click create new story, and put in your topic. Um, I should have done this already, but let me scroll down here. I have a link to an example that I've done for you. So I'm going to open that example here. And the topic that I've chosen, and since I've chosen it, you can't do it, um, is the Bering Strait Land Bridge. So in order to, to claim my topic and uh, have a placeholder on the timeline, I'm going to copy that topic in here. I'm going to put in the rough dates uh, for which it took place. This one, as you'll notice on the sheet, um, about 11,000 BC, e, BC or BCE when it ended. Um, I'm not going to go back further than that just so I don't skew how long our timeline is. So I've chosen 11,000 BC. You actually have to click on the calendar itself in order for this to work. Don't know why. If you don't click on the calendar, you change everything up here and then don't click on the calendar and click confirm nothing will happen. Uh, but as long as you've chosen a date, click confirm, you'll notice here that the start date uh, has changed. So I'm going to have for this one, the start date and the end date be the same uh, because I've made that kind of arbitrary choice so that our timeline doesn't go back all the way, uh, you know, 30,000 years ago or so. Um, just so that our timeline doesn't stretch and skew in a funny way uh, visually. You can make decisions like that. You do need to think through, though, how you're placing your timeline chronologically, or excuse me, how you're placing your topic chronologically on the timeline. If you have to make a decision like that, explain it um, in your entry on the timeline. Um, if not, if you have something fairly straightforward, like you're doing a person and you have a birth date and a death date, you can just go with that. I'm also going to, in the intro box here, write by Brandon Morgan. So I've put my name on it. Um, you can create categories if you'd like. I might actually do that here once I'm done with this. This is a new timeline for a new section of the class. So um, there will be categories like person, place, event, and so on. Um, and you can choose one of those depending on what your topic is. Um, and then you click Save. So all I've done now is just that very first step of creating a placeholder. You can see it here on the timeline that has my name on it, my topic, so that um, now I have claimed that. I'm doing Beringia. Um, no one else can take it now that they've seen that. The reason that I really emphasize do this first is because it takes a lot of work to actually complete the assignment. And it's a lot of work that is done not right here on the timeline. Um, so you don't want to go through all the work, then come to the timeline and find that someone else has already posted on your topic. Um, so again, make sure you check first and make sure that you create a placeholder first. Now that I've done that, I will show you how to put everything in to the course timeline. And again, the explanation for what's expected and, and so on is in the timeline assignment instructions. What I'm showing you here is just the technical stuff. Um, so first, what I'm going to do is put in my outside source. So this is the uh, URL for the uh, source that I've found relative to my topic, Beringia. I'm going to the link box here, and I'm just going to paste it in and click Save. Um, now that I've done that, I'll just show you what happens. You click More on the entry here. I haven't put anything else in, but now there's this Find Out More button that wouldn't have been there before. And if I click on it, 
that will take me to the source that I found on Beringia. And now everyone else can also find that source. All right. So now I also need to add the entry that I wrote. So a couple of paragraphs that I wrote here, I made sure to define the topic, explain what it is, when it was. Um, and then the last paragraph here explains the topic's historical significance in specific terms. Make sure that you always have explained historical significance before you're done uh, with each of your entries. That's kind of the key part here. So all of this stuff is definition and it's important. And it kind of explains um, some of the ideas that came from the source that I found to supplement what we've been reading about elsewhere in the class. But then this is what draws the analysis. This last paragraph on significance explains why does this topic matter? So if you have not done that, you're not done yet. You need to make sure that you have explained in specific terms using examples where you can um, why your topic is important to history, why it matters. So I've, top, I've copied all my text now. I'm going back to the timeline and I'm going to click this extra info tab, should have already done. And I'm going to paste my information into the full text box and click save. You'll notice there's all my text. Um, now I'm going to add my media. This is the last step or you know, one of the, the last steps. You need to make sure that you have a video source or an image. It can be either one. Um, some topics have a lot of good videos on them. Others don't. Some have really good images. Others don't. Um, so that is just totally up to your discretion based on what you are able to find when you do your research. I found a video on YouTube, so I'm going to post that here in the media box. So with the source uh, box, I'm going to paste in the URL of the video. Then I'm going to choose that this is a video, uh, video type. Um, I don't need to put in a thumbnail, don't need to put in a caption. You can if you want, but you don't have to. Click Save, and there's the video. You can click on it now, and it will play. I'm going to close it, though, just so that we don't uh, take up time with that here. Um, so now, let me hide the admin box. Now my entry is all done. Um, so I can see there's the title, there's the um, year, um, there's my video or image, and um, all that I've written, and as well as my link. When you click the X, that's what you see. Once other people start adding theirs as well, there will be a bunch of gray boxes like this one with different topics all throughout the timeline. When you come back to do your connection step, you're going to also want to create a separate document like this one. So this is the timeline step. And this is the document that I mentioned at the beginning of the video that you need to upload to Blackboard. So make sure you upload your document to Blackboard in the space that is there, either via the learning module or the timeline, assign or excuse, yeah, the timeline tab. Um, and then you've also posted it here. So that's, you need to have done both of those to be completely finished with the ID step. When you go back to do the connection step, again, you're going to browse through the timeline. You're going to scroll around and see what other people have posted. And you're going to be looking for events or places, topics that connect to yours in some way, shape, or form. Uh, please don't just draw comparisons. So for example, it's really easy to draw comparisons between uh, Hernan Cortez and Juan de Oñate, for example, because both were um, conquistadores of a sort and colonizers, but their lives didn't directly connect in any way. Or at least if you want to make some sort of connection, you're going to really have to explain it. Um, you could make a direct connection, however, between Juan de Oñate and the Battle of Acoma, if uh, you, know, you came across those um, topics because Juan de Oñate was involved in the Battle of Acoma, especially in, uh, not in the battle itself, but in the aftermath, in the decision to um, punish the Acoma people who had risen up against Oñate and the colonizers. Um, so again, there's a direct connection there. You want to explain it and why it's significant, just in a paragraph. And once you've done that, you'll come back, let me, sorry, we go here to admin. You'll come back to your story. So there will be a list of stories here. You'll make sure you're on yours and you'll click edit. And then you will, um, in the extra info box where you've already posted all of your information, you'll go to the very bottom, you'll hit enter and write connection, colon, and then you'll paste that 
connection paragraph there. Again, I haven't done that just for the sake of time, uh, but I wanted to show you what to do. And then you'll also upload the connection document um, in Blackboard or CNM Learn as well, making sure to use that table of contents to find the submission link. Uh, one last thing to say, um, again, make sure that you've made a connection rather than a comparison. And if you look at the timeline and there's nothing that connects very well to your topic, I would rather that you choose something that has not been entered on the timeline that connects well to your topic than to try to make a tenuous connection to something. So again, if you have Onyate and the only thing you can find that's even close is Hernan Cortez, um, you can choose to connect to the Battle of Akama, even if it's not on the timeline. So hopefully that all makes sense. Um, and hopefully that shows you how to operate the course timeline. Um, you may find that you need to use a certain browser with your computer for the timeline to function well. I'm using Chrome right now because I have a good screencast program in Chrome. However, when I usually use the timeline, I prefer Safari. I use a Mac um, because Tiki Taki seems to work better uh, through Safari for whatever reason. So whether you're on a Mac or a PC, um, you might have to experiment with just a couple of browsers and see which one it works best on um, and go with that. So again, hopefully all that's helpful. Please ask questions early and often whenever you have them. And I look forward to building this course timeline with you.